Welcome to Welcome Presents, the Elite Talk Show. I am your host, Sarah, out of Syracuse, New York. Hi, everybody. I'm Orlando from Fort Lauderdale. And I know we're this is primarily an AEW Talk Show. Uh, right off the bat, though, we're going to hit a little bit of WWE since big news came out yesterday. Uh, a bunch of stars being released yesterday. And we got quite the list here, so we'll... I listen to all first, and we'll talk about some individually. Uh, so mm-hmm. the big one, or the big four, I guess you could say, Samoa Joe, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Mickey James. Those are the big four. And then maybe Chelsea Green throw in the top five, you know, big surprises. Uh, then you also have Tucker, Kalisto, Bo Dallas, Mojo Riley, and Wesley Blake. Yeah. So, yeah, those are, like, kind of shocking. It's just like, I don't <sighs> – it seems like this is going to be like a tradition from WWE. It's like, oh, they got us all happy and stuff, and then they just rock us down. It's like, oh. It's, I mean, it's been the usual every week after WrestleMania. Every year, the week after WrestleMania, you know, there's some releases. Not always big names, like it's been the past two years, though. Well, remember, last year was a big, like, big yeah. cut. Yeah. It was like, it was staff, it was producers, it was, like, talent. It was a mm-hmm. lot, so... That's the thing. And um, so this year it wasn't, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't want to say it was that bad, but it was just like, okay, it just came out of nowhere because I kind of understood why they kind of released these people. I mean, technically they don't want to use them, then, you know. Yeah. I mean, some of them, it's hard to explain, I guess. You know, you got smaller joy, I guess. I guess you can speculate that he wanted to get back in the ring, you know, it's been a desire of his. Not quite ready yeah. to do just commentary. I guess we can speculate, you know, maybe Jack, Debbie Deckers didn't want to clear him, so they let yeah. him go somewhere else maybe that wants to take a chance on him. Exactly. I mean, I mean, but we don't really know how bad his injury was because, like, technically it was a concussion, so he was out for almost a year. Well, yeah, like a year and two months, I think. Didn't he hurt so, his wrist, too, along with the concussion? I don't remember, but... It was no, but the major injuries were two concussion, two concussions back to back. So I I can understand why they didn't want to do it because some circumstances and and they wanted to move in a new direction with commentary. So they thought like, oh, just stay back, wait a moment. But maybe he just didn't want to wait. So yeah, I mean, I can see him going off finishing his wrestling career somewhere else. Uh, maybe impact a ring of honor. And then when he's done wrestling and maybe return to WWE for commentary. He's definitely a great commentary. I mean, if uh, AEW is smart, they could sign him there. I mean, that would be a big yeah. get, you know. Yeah. But I mean, I can see him. It's going to be huge. Yeah, exactly. Like, impact, that will probably be beneficial for him because he has history there. And it seems like they always bring back talent that was there. Like, they mm-hmm. brought back a lot of talent. They used to, like, actually start up, like, TNA Impact. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, the Iconics, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce. To me, I see Peyton Royce kind of going to AEW, you know, because her husband works there. I mean, that's, to me, that makes the most sense. Yeah. 
I agree with that. And I just read a report that Kevin Dunn didn't get Billy Kay. I'm just like, are you that closed minded that you don't get it? It's just yeah. sometimes it's just I don't get the minds that produces the show. Like they say they don't get it, but if the crowd is enjoying it, why don't like you capitalize it? Yeah. It's just like I think like it because it brings back to the uh uh CM Pump's uh, pipe bomb, like uh podcast interview that he did is or like yeah his pipe bomb actually i'm sorry that he said in like in 2011 that he said like oh you're a billionaire but you're not a multi-billionaire like it's saying like you you just want to just get one billion but you could have made more than just one billion you know so i i don't get it but but billy k i i don't know where to see her i mean i don't know if she'll go back home to australia just be back with family I don't know if she wants to continue on here in the States because like, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, I see them, I see the two of them kind of sticking together, you know, Bill Kay's going to stay in the States. So I think it's either impact or AEW. No impact more because they have the women's tag belts. They could be the first women in history to be women's WWE tag team champions and then impact knockouts champion uh tag team champion so that's yeah, something we'll right there we'll see what happens there uh mickey mm-hmm. james this one was kind of surprised too but we haven't really seen her on tv ever since uh she sold that one really well against oscar they, they stopped the match and because they thought she was knocked out I haven't seen there, her on TV since I, that match i think there's also a problem when it comes to women's uh age as well like yeah. when it comes to a guy they don't really care how old he is you know but when it comes to a woman at her age, then that's an issue, mm-hmm. you know? So for Mickey, it would be a big get for AEW because she's a legend. She's very well known and that will help their women's division there. Yes. I may, be see, I may see her in uh, NWA with her husband when he's on, or yeah. maybe she'll just be retired. Maybe she's gonna retire soon, I don't know. I mean, she's got her own podcast. She's got a couple other things going for her, so we'll see. She has her music. I mean, yeah. I mean, her music is doing well. You know, she's doing country music, so that's selling. So, yeah, her and two other women. Uh, they do uh, the Grown Ass Women podcast, which is pretty entertaining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tucker, now uh, he's posting some some good teasers up on Twitter. If you haven't seen, oh, he's winning to get that podcast money to spill the tea. <laughs> So it looks like he's got some tea to spill. Uh, I, I, I want to hear what he wants to say. I think what happened was maybe he has um, some backstage note about, like, why they split them up. Yeah. Because, like, I, it, that's unfortunate. Like, you b- were brought up together, but one of you is the more successful than the other. He kind of got the Marty Jannetty out. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, it's like uh, Otis is kind of the Shawn Michaels, which is unfortunate, but... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, then we got Kalisto and Bo Dallas. Kalisto Which is unfortunate that Kalisto, Kalisto got cleared, and then he was, like, featured every now and then. Like, they should have used him at least. Like, I yeah, I can see him going back to AAA or some Mexican promotion, I think. No, put him in Ring of Honor. I think he would work well in Ring of Honor, you know? Like, Tucker also in Ring of Honor, maybe as well, yeah. or maybe Impact too, like, you know? Bo Dallas, I heard, was kind of preparing for life after wrestling, so I don't know if he's actually just going to retire or what he's doing. No, I mean, like, if the money is right, he'll probably come back, maybe. I don't know. Like, I mean, he there's rumors that he's kind of dating uh, Liv Morgan now, so they have, mm-hmm. like, real estate together, so that's the thing that they're doing right now, which is real estate, so I don't know. Maybe he was... Maybe he's burnt out. I don't know. I mean, maybe he just needs a few years away from the business and then maybe he'll come back. I don't know. Maybe just take a couple, you know, indie dates here and there and just kind of stay in ring shape and we'll see. Yeah. And like, you know, like do a little appearances here and there too, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mojo Riley and Wesley Blake. I don't see the words anything as indie guys. Well, Mojo, I think he will be more of a personality. He has the energy of the personality than like a wrestler. I mean, if he wants to continue, I could see him maybe an impact, mm-hmm. you know, maybe MLW. They, you know, they have a good social media kind of following, you know. Yeah. 
you know, and plus, like, you know, like, if anything, like, if, because technically, if they're smart, AEW will get Mojo because Mojo comes is Gronk. So, yeah, very true. Mm-hmm. Um, I saved this one for last, Chelsea Green. We can speculate where she's going back and forth here. Um, my initial oh, no. thought, oh, go ahead. No, I was thinking, I think she's going to be like her husband, uh, Matt Cardona. Like, maybe she doesn't want a contract. Maybe she just wants to work everywhere. Like, because, like, how she said it, it seems like she's going to just really work more hard, like, harder. Mm-hmm. So maybe she doesn't want a contract. Maybe she just wants to work here and there. So. Yeah, my thought was that, you know, she was going to follow Matt Cardona, go to Impact. Uh, there should be an interesting tweet up to say, um, tagging uh, Pence El Zero Madra, saying, well, I guess I'll see you a little bit sooner than, that, than we thought. I think she was the Black Widow in Lucha Underground. That's why she said that. I forget. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch that season that she was on. I have to, I have to find it to watch it. Um, what should I call it? Um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, it would be smart for them to use her in AEW. True. Yeah. Like, here's the thing that we're we're saying right now. There's a lot of potential for all these wrestlers to still continue working, and for me. I like to have that mindset. I'm sad that they let them go, but at the same time, they're not really using them. Like, you know, like how Andrade is like throwing shade at them, which is kind of true. It's like, oh, you just want them to sit back in catering? It's like, you yeah. know. Yeah, just, I'll see. You know, I mean, it's a better time right now because last year there was nothing open. Now mm-hmm. a lot more things are opening. There's a lot more wrestling indie shows that are happening. Uh, soon enough, by the summer, they're supposedly saying that a lot of the shows are going to now go on the road again. So we'll see if that's going to happen. So mm-hmm. we got to wait and see. Uh, speaking of releases, we'll hit AEW had their first, I would say, non-coronavirus release this week. Uh, we're seeing <laughs> Ivo Lee. Uh, she, she spoke a little tea on Twitter, citing that Thunder Rosa was slandering her name backstage. Uh, there's mistreatment again by one of the coaches and management said fired her instead of taking the mistreatment seriously. I, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I'm sorry, Belize, but it kind of shows in your work, like that match that she had with Thunder Rosa. Mm-hmm. Everybody was talking about that match, like yeah. how horrible that was, how she was not selling or nothing, like with her face, you know, it's like, but look, at the end of the day, look, she she is uh, she is a good wrestler, in my opinion. You know, she'll find work yeah, somewhere. Yeah, she'll get more. Mm-hmm. I just hope they don't hold it against Diamante since they were tag team partners. Well, no, I, Diamante is still there. I I've mm-hmm. seen her do like singles work now, so. Yeah, she's got a match on Elevation coming up against uh, Thunder Rosa. Get believe it or not, against all people. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. We shall see. Uh, this week's AEW Dynamite. Uh, first one since NXT moved to Tuesday night and they draw their biggest audience, 1.2 million. Mm-hmm. I think everybody was just upset with the whole Raw, what happened. They're just mm-hmm. like, you know what? <laughs> Screw to pay with that Raw. Let me watch AEW, which is a better show. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it was a, to be that, uh, that first match was a great match. Everything else was good. There's like little bits and pieces that they're moving, you know. I mean, it was a lot better from their last week's show. I mean, that's my opinion. There's some people that didn't like that last week's show. I mean, they enjoyed the yesterday's show. I'm, I'm sorry, the this past Wednesday show. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I forget today's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and I usually record on Thursdays. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, not every show is going to be, you know, a home run. There's going to be some people that, you know, are kind of mess hitter. You know, hit or miss. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then there's nothing wrong with being critical. Like some people just like that. Some people just like, oh, you're just a hater. I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, I like what I like, and I like, and you know, there's some things that I did like from last week's show, and there is others that I don't. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, Frankie Kazarian's come out and said that Christian Cage may be, you know, better than ever, you know, as far as shape wise and ring awareness. Uh, compliments him as having one of the greatest ring IQs in the business. Uh, even the way he's wrestled, with, you know, when he came back in free spring, you know, he looked really good. Yeah, I mean, like he he has been great, you know. So 
it's good that he still has like a platform to show what he can do. So, you know. Uh, Young Bucks uh, were doing an interview with Scott Fishman of TV Insider, uh, responding to criticism that AW has way too many factions. Uh, I know I've seen a few people in the Facebook groups and Twitter you know, express the same sentiment. You know, there's too many factions. Um, they went on to say that you know you ordered the Japan stuff, where it's just been tons of factions for you know 40 plus years. Um, they're just, you know, they're used to, you know, U.S. wrestling where there's maybe two to three factions in promotion and that's it. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I'm trying to get used to the factions, like, because I'm not, like, really used to factions either. Mm -hmm. No, but I also remember that uh, WCW tried to do factions, but yeah. uh, it's just their booking was horrible. Like, when, from what I've seen from some of the, like, Nitros and Thunder mm -hmm. that they had, so... I mean, Matt Jackson, as Matt or Nick, one of the two, went on to say, you know, it's easier to book, you know, hit a lot of factions because you have, it starts building, you know, more natural and organic rivalries versus, you know, having much people, you know, by themselves. And it's a little bit harder to book and get storylines going sometimes. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. Like, everybody's no. doing something. Like, they showed, like, uh, what was it? Um, from last week's show, they had, like, 74 wrestlers in different segments that's a lot but it's good Everybody right but uh, but it's just depending on who takes the mic who's actually talking who's actually fighting who's actually having matches so it's mm -hmm. you know uh so we got one injury and one return i made chris statlander make her injury return this week and even though it was a quick squash match she looked pretty good yeah they're trying to get her like back into the wing of things you know like because she's been away for seven eight months so and now she's in a faction <laughs> like how we were saying before you know but i you know what they if they're gonna do a lot of factions they need to add now women to factions now you know because like they have a lot of women that are really not really doing much and they could use like some factions themselves as well mm -hmm. so so but i'm happy that she's back it'll be like I mean, they're building their women's division. Like uh, last Wednesday's show, they had like five different segments with women, which is, which good. is good. Yes. Uh huh. What do you think of Setlander's new face paint? I like her as a brunette. I like the green. I do. Uh, I I don't know if it was because of the blonde that took me off when she was like with the blue and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I like the green with the brunette hair. It, it fits her. To me, it's, to me, it kind of screams, not that it's a bad thing, but it kind of screams, you know, David Bowie-esque to me. Yeah. It design. seems like she got both, like, she's, like, has that type of influence, like, very David Bowie-esque, you know, with the, with the one eye kind of, like, paint, and she has, like, a, a contact lens, too, like, David mm -hmm. Bowie, because, well, it, that's his actual eyes, because I think he has one brown, one blue, I forget. But, yeah, yeah. I think that she was doing, like, that kind of, like, sense, too, so... And um, then, of course, we have um, one injury to report. Uh, Dex Harwood of FTR is dealing with a little elbow injury. Uh, Seth has missed about six weeks, so nothing too bad. He can still be on TV and have a presence. And when is Blood and Guts again? Uh, I think I saw May. Okay, so if it's in, like, in the middle to end of May, then he should be good, so... He, he won't probably, he'll probably do it like backstage stuff and maybe like little semi little brawls, but not too bad. So, yeah, let's so pull it up real quick. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. One, one other thing uh, rumor, you know, it's starting online, uh, speculation saying EW could be looking to start their own streaming service pretty soon. Um, they said you know, they're filming a whole bunch of new content. They're saying... Who, uh, AEW? Yeah, they're filming a bunch of extra content. Uh, so they're, the speculation is they're getting ready to either A, start their own streaming service, or hope to get picked up by one of the bigger streaming services. Um, I think HBO Max. HBO Max. HBO Max. I'm telling you. That's a great deal for them. And that will help HBO Max too. So Tony Collins got you know, the insider with Warner Media, so... Exactly. So that would work, that would that would fit well, you mm -hmm. know. So what? Uh, because to me, like, look, HBO Max, they have great content there, 
And if they're smart, they could even do pay-per-views because they do sometimes do boxing pay-per-views there as well. So shout out to Flamingo who gave us a what's up. What's up with hey you, there, Flamingo? give us a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Yes, on our YouTube channel, please. <laughs> uh, so Blood and Guts is scheduled to take place on May 5th. Oh. I know Dex is, I think he's been dealing with the injury for a week or two already. So that may have already factored in with the six weeks. So it could be that could be a return date. Yeah, maybe, okay. maybe he just won't have a big impact in the Blood and Guts match. Probably, yeah. And plus, like um, last, last in, first out kind of thing. Yeah, and plus they do every other week, so they don't really tape every week. So sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul White, I uh, was doing an interview as well, and they asked about doing the Captain Insano character from Waterboy. Um, he said he'd be all in for that if he got to wrestle. Uh, Tony Khan is looking into buying the copyright for it, or already has. Is, it, is that a Warner Brothers property? I'm trying to think. I don't think that's a Warner Brothers property. I'm not sure. I know this Happy Madison exists when uh, Adam Sandler's movies. No, yeah, exactly. I know that Happy, yeah, but yeah. But I mean, like, if he could buy the I mean, if he could buy the rights, then, you know, that would be good for, you know. Mm -hmm. Do we get Adam Sandler in Paul Waits Corner, though? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just waiting for a lot of matches for Big Show to have, like him versus uh, Lance Archer. That, that's, you know, uh, Murder Hawk, Lance. Uh, who else? Maybe. Um, Michael Sun. No, I don't want to see that match. I'm sorry. Like, I. I do for the fact that Mark Marco Sun said Big Show was his hero growing up, so give him the match. Oh, Luchasaurus. I'd like to see him mm -hmm. versus Luchasaurus. That would be good. Or Wardlow. Yeah, there you go. Wardlow too. You know. Or maybe do like a Jack uh Jack Swagger. Um uh, uh what's his real name? Um, uh, Jay Cager, sorry. Yeah. I, they had a good feud in WWE. I don't know why everybody pooped on it. I was, it was not that bad. I, I yeah. Uh so AEW president Tony Khan says he will be at Impact Rebellion pay-per-view when that airs. And he's also bringing referee Audrey Edwards, or Aubrey Edwards. Ooh, we're going to get a dusty kind of finish for that main event. Ooh. Well, People are going to We all know Kenny's win. Yeah, yeah, everybody knows. No, because like if they shock everybody and have Rich Swan win, the internet's going to freaking blow up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? I mean, if Kenny wins... He's AEW World Champion, Impact World Champion, and AAA Mega Champion. Mm -hmm. it's just, he's saying that he's going to defend all three titles. I ugh. I believe it. Yes. I'm knocking on word. I'm giving him a blessing that he doesn't get injured because this will be a good storyline. Mm -hmm. And it will mean something whoever beats him for those titles. So, Wasn't it Jushin Liger used to go around you know, collecting all the belts as well? Yeah, because that's what everybody keeps on saying. They even said that in the press conference um, yes, last night. I saw that they pushed it up on YouTube if anybody wants to see. Um, so they were thinking about that. It's just like, and of course, this smug self, like, like you know, it's like, it's my destiny because I'm one of the greatest and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, last bit of news. Uh, there's an article up, you know, the status of AEW's current plan to leave Daly's place this summer. Um, AEW starting to schedule shows outside of Daily's Place starting mid to late August. They, they, haven't said, they haven't said that it's definite, but they want to get stuff in place just in case they're able to get out. Uh, rumor had, is that they're going to try to hold all out in Chicago as well. Which that's very smart. So, But mm -hmm. it's all depending on how everything goes. So let's hope everybody gets their vaccine. Please still wear your mask. You know, the, they said crossed. at least they said at least seventy five percent of the people. That means in the United States, seventy five percent of all you get your vaccination. You still wear your mask. You still do your distancing. This will be cleared, and then we could go back to normal, folks. So, you know, 
So that's it. Here's like here's I, wa- I, I want to go back to a wrestling show. Like yeah. I got tickets for AEW at the end of September. So I was like, come on, get back to it. Yes, yes. I, I I want them to have one show down here in Miami. They did have one that was like two years ago. So I'm just like I'm. Well, no, last year that was 2020. Sorry, uh, but I want to see it again. You know, so. I enjoyed that fa- uh, that four way tag team match. That was my best. Like I was plotting for that. I was just like, ah, oh, I just I want to see it again. I just I yes. want to go back. <laughs> uh. All right, so that'll do it for the elite talk this week. Um, don't forget to check us out on Twitter at Buckle Down ENT, uh, where we are growing every day. Uh, check us on all your podcasts, um, Apple, Spotify, whichever. Um, yes. Hopefully we, we get more content, more stuff out, so that yeah. that way we keep growing. Because the landscape, I have a feeling, 2021, summer 2021, it's going to be the boom of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I'm just praying to the wrestling gods. Be like, yes, give us that yeah. wrestling boom. <laughs> and we get two interviews scheduled for our interview show, The Lockup. Um, next week, we're going to be interviewing Johnny Patches of New York Championship Wrestling. Uh, so we'll have to hear what he has to say about running a wrestling organization in the pandemic era. You know, we've heard wrestlers, you know, how they're doing it. I know because they're one from the owner's side. And then, of yeah, course, that's... the last week of April, we got Alex Rossia joining us. Oh, well, we should ask her about Eva Lee. Does she have any run-ins with her? Ooh. <laughs> we'll see if she spills the tea. <laughs> exactly, right? You have to tune in to find out. Mm. Yes. <laughs> where, where can they find you, Orlando? Uh, you can find me at Twitter at Orly1985. That's O-R-L-L-I-E-1985. Go ahead and give me a follow. I have to start tweeting some more. I haven't really tweeted a lot. So. Yeah, I haven't done much on my personal account. I've been focusing on the same buckle bombs. I know me and Dan are working on the buckle bombs, so we'll see what happens. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.